Welcome into the fall season recap of the Bellhaven Blazers Coaches Show. I'm Kenneth Nash, and joining me as always, head coach Blaine McCorkle. Coach, thanks for coming in. A couple weeks uh, removed, but thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's been a while. It's good to be back with you. Yeah, the Blazers wrapped up their season a couple of weeks ago on the road at ETVU with an impressive 41-7 win over the Tigers, secured a 7-3 season, best winning percentage in school history, best record in school history, back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time in school history, a fabulous way to finish the season. we got a lot to talk about today, but let's start there because uh, we haven't gotten a chance to talk about that game. Yeah, the kids, kids really showed up, and then they, they went after that one hard. I was really proud of the way they attacked that game. You know, that's a team that we had never beaten mm -hmm. in the history of the rivalry. Yep. Um, they had averaged 51 points every time we played them going into that game, yep. and we went in there and uh, started fast and, and kept our foot on the gas the whole way through and came out with a 41-7 to win. And uh, kids had a lot of fun with it. And, you know, what was really neat, we were able to bring our freshmen over who usually don't travel yeah. with us. We got an extra bus to bring them over and be on the sideline and enjoy it. And uh, had a great crowd there. Mm -hmm. And our section of, of the stadium over there was packed. We had as many people there as they did. So just a good day and a great way to end a great season for Bellhaven football. Speaking of the season, it, we, we've talked about about the team, but there was an incredible season for a lot of individuals on this team. 16 different players received all-conference recognitions. Carlton Brown was named the ASC Defensive Lineman of the Year. We can try to break it down best we can. It's a lot of names to get through. But just overall, you had a ton of first-teamers, second-teamers, third-teamers, Rock Sheck Snyder on the sports uh, Sportsmanship Team of the Year. Fabulous season, and, and a, that's a new record for ASC uh, all-conference nominees for this school. Yeah, it was pretty neat. It was a lot of guys honored. I think we had four first-teamers on mm -hmm. offense, four first-teamers on defense, yep. uh, 16 guys total honored, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, when I got here four years ago, we had never had anybody above honorable mention. Yeah. And now to have 16 guys uh, recognized on the team is, is a pretty neat accomplishment and um, speaks well to our recruiting, speaks well to our development of kids, and it speaks well to um, kids buying in and going to work and the respect that we've earned throughout the, the ASC now, which is, is pretty neat because it is all voted on by the other coaches. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, that's a good point to make. It's voted on by the other coaches. So this is, this is recognition that, that the guys that you are playing are seeing and going, okay, these guys are impressive. These are the best at their position. Position groups. Uh, you mentioned uh, we had eight first teamers this year, which is incredible um, to have eight first teamers. And then Carlton Brown, we talked about him a lot. Yeah. ASC Defensive Lineman of the Year. He was well deserving of that award. He was one of the most disruptive players on defense uh, in the conference and really in probably the country this year. Yeah, Carlton's he's he's a really neat kid. Uh, he's a great athlete. Yeah. He's very explosive. He's very powerful, <clears throat> um, and he plays with an unbelievable motor. Yeah. I mean, when that ball snapped, he's he's foot on the gas and going. He's not letting off. So he's a lot of fun to coach. He's a lot of fun to be around. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a, he, if he's in here, he's the most laid back, easy going yeah. guy. But when that ball snapped, he's going to get somebody. Yeah. Um, and he had a great year. You know, he led the ASC in sacks. He, he broke the school single season uh, kick block record. Yes. If I'm yes. Not correct. Yeah. Um, you know, so he, I think he was very deserving of the defensive lineman of the year in a league that is loaded with defensive linemen. Yeah. I mean, you talk about. Guys like Kevon Shepard from Mary Harden Baylor, I mean, there's not a better defensive lineman anywhere. So yep. for Carlton to be voted above him uh, speaks volume, and and hopefully his awards aren't over for the season. You know, yep. we still got some All-Region and some All-American stuff coming soon, and. Yep. You know, I wouldn't be shocked to see Carlton pop up on an All-American team. I think he's very deserving, and if you're still voting and you watch this, he's worth it. He's worth it. Let's bounce over real quick. Last night. Connerly Trophy presentation, Brad Foley, who is the Bellhaven all-time leading rusher, all-time rushing touchdowns leader, uh, one of the best players to walk through this this campus. Uh, he was recognized. He was Bellhaven's nominee for the Connerly Trophy, second time he's been nominated. You were there with him last night. Can you just talk a little bit about that night and that, that overall recognition? Yeah, it was a great night. C Spire does a really good job with that event and really appreciative of them putting it on. And... Uh, you know, they, they put a lot into it. You know, yeah. it's, it's a first-class <clears throat> affair. You know, Charles Davis, uh, the college analyst that everybody yep. sees on CBS yep. was there as the MC, and um, you know every school in the state has a representative and um, obviously Matt Corral from Ole Miss won the award, yeah. um, <clears throat> which is no surprise. He's a great player. He's yeah. deserving. Yeah. Um, but I would argue that Brad Foley did as much for our team as any player did for yeah. our team in the state of Mississippi. And that's yeah. one thing that's a little bit, you struggle with that award a little bit. You know, you kind of wish they would divide it into a Division One award and then a Division Two and Three award yeah. and give two yeah. because it is a fan-based award and things like that. And you know, it's going to go to Ole Miss or Mississippi State every year, and yeah. that's what it is. But we're super proud of Brad, and, and I, just like Carlton, I wouldn't be surprised if his awards are not over for the year. I think there's probably still more to come uh, as things get released in the coming weeks. Yeah, Brad had the, just the third 1,000-yard rushing season in Bellhaven history. He's just the second player to do it. Johnny Horn did it twice uh, in 1998 and 99. Right. Um, so first person in, in 20 years to also have that um, phenomenal career. We, we talked about well over 3,000 yards rushing, well over 20 rushing touchdowns. 
just the overall impact, and it's something we've talked about a lot, but the overall impact of Brad, uh, he was another, he was a first team uh, all ASC recogni uh, recognition again this year. Just the overall impact of Brad and, and seeing him kind of see his career culminate at this point, which is a really, really fun spot to be in. Yeah, it is. And he has come so far in our time here. You know, he's one of the few guys that we inherited that's still here. Well, he's, mm -hmm. he's gone now. He just finished up, uh, and we we're going to miss him. Um, but to watch his growth and development, not just as a football player, he's always a good football player. Now I think he's a great football player. Yeah. Um, but just as a person, as an individual, as a leader, the way he carries himself, yeah. he's grown so much through our program. Um, and, you know, he, he tweeted out, and I'd, I'd kind of forgotten this. He was kind of thinking to people a week ago about uh, a couple of years ago. I told him he was a lazy football player. Yeah. And he was. <laughs> I did see that. Yeah. He, he was a lazy. He was a, he was a talented player, but he was lazy. Yeah. And you never know what sticks with a kid, but he took that and ran with it. And I, I think anybody would say he's anything but now. Because Absolutely. Because if you yeah. come watch us practice, uh, there's not a harder working guy out there. And he mm -hmm. is focused and he's full speed ahead and he is purposeful. We talk about being uncommon all the time. Yeah. Brad Foley's uncommon. Yeah. And we're really proud of everything he's accomplished and we're going to miss him. And, you know, once these accolades finish this winter, I think the next stop for him is probably the Bellhaven Hall of Fame. I think, yeah. You know, when that time comes around, he, he needs to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely incredible football player. And you're losing a, you know, we, we've talked about that you have a very young team, but you are losing a, a core group of seniors, um, guys that have really made an impact. The quarterback, Mayo Asagunla, Isaiah Blackman on the defensive line, Demetrius Brokenberry, Rock Sheck Snyder. I'm not even naming all of them, obviously, but, right. but that's a, a really, really important group. You know, we're going to shift to offseason talk in a second, but how do you kind of, you know, reconcile with that and, and get ready and I guess to, you know, as cold as it sounds, replace them? Go in the next year. Yeah, well, it's not cold. It's, it's part of the business. Yeah. They, they know it, you know. Um, and I tell all of our players every year that we recruit, when the season's over, I have an exit meeting with every player yeah. on our roster. They sit right there at my desk, and we kind of talk about where they are. And I tell them all very bluntly, my job for the next two months is to out-recruit you. Yeah. You know, your job is to not let me. Yeah. You know? So you got to go to work. you got to develop and know that we're always going to be trying to grow the program. Yeah. Um, we love you. We want you to grow. We want you to have an All-American career like Carlton and Brad and some of these guys will. But yeah. We're always going to keep trying to improve. So, you know, I woke up the next morning after ETBU. I got up at 6 o'clock that morning watched the film. And yep. as soon as I turned it off, I started thinking about we've got to find some defensive linemen to replace those guys. Yep. You know, um, Brad, we talked about Colby will be back, and there's a good stable of, of backs behind yep. him. Uh, we will lose Mario at quarterback. Um, I'll say this now. I think I can say this. We're actually not losing Mario. We're going to put him on our coaching staff. Awesome. Um, very, so he's very in cool. grad school, and he's decided he wants to be a, a career coach. So we're going to – Hire him on January That's 1st. Awesome. He, yeah. He's on salary here, so he's going to help us out, and he'll do a great job uh, helping our staff uh, develop some of those guys that come yeah. in. And he'll be a great resource for uh, Tim Johnson and Ben Owens this spring as they battle out to see who's going to take his job on the field. We'll talk about the offseason in a second. Before we do, though, big news. It's been a lot of big news. Bellhaven announced uh, just uh, last week, actually, that uh, they would be moving to the USA South Conference, leaving the American Southwest Conference uh, in the start of fall of 22. So you are now shifting your attention to a whole new set of opponents, obviously. There's a lot to come with that, a lot of news that will continue to come with that, but just your overall thoughts and how you think it will kind of impact your program. Yeah, we're really excited about the, the move to the USA South. I think it fits our university as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a conference should be relative, yeah. you know, and, and we're really excited about the things we accomplished in the ASC this fall. And that's why one reason it was very important for us to win now so that we could kind of justify the move a little bit yeah. to, to the ASC and, and the reasons we're doing it are not competitive by any means. We want to compete with anybody in the country. Yeah. And I would love to play a lot of the ASC teams again. I just want to do it in the playoffs, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and that's our goal. Um, but we're really excited about the move. You know, all the schools are very comparative to us in mm -hmm. size of in, uh, enrollment size, uh, cost of attendance, um, facilities, staffing, roster, very, very similar. You yeah. know, as soon as it was announced, we went on Thanksgiving break, and uh, my wife got upset with me. I spent every day, all day, studying those opponents. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've actually already got a file on every school in the conference, just kind of learning about them. Not their schematics. We don't have film yet, but just who are they, what their staffs looks like, what's their history. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a great fit for us in all sports, and it'll be very competitive. Um, you know, there's a couple teams in there. Huntington, they're the Mary Harden Baylor of that conference. Yeah. You know, they've won it six times in a row. And yeah been to the postseason six times and you know Brevard's right there with them and this Methodist school has popped up kind of out of nowhere tracking them they're a little bit like us mm -hmm. you know they started off uh, down a few years ago and have worked their way up and had a 7-2 year this year and 
uh, finished second in the conference. So it's going to be very competitive, and, and we've got our work cut out for us. But one thing I'm excited about, too, you know, we've got a lot of kids from right here in Mississippi who've mm -hmm. never been anywhere other than Mississippi and Texas. Yeah. They've been to Louisiana to get to Texas. Yeah. So when I ask them to raise their hands, you know, so many of our kids have never been to Georgia or Tennessee or North Carolina or Virginia, Absolutely, and yeah. they're going to get that true student-athlete experience you want in college to go some places and see different things. And I think it's going to be great for us. Well, and as somebody from Texas, I can tell you that that drive north and east is a lot more fun than that drive all the way west up to Alpine, Texas, right. that is for sure. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the offseason and what that looks like, because I think a lot of people that watch this would be really interesting to see what your your job and your staff and your team do uh, during the offseason. You mentioned right after the ETVU game, you were up the next morning watching film prepping. You, you made a comment that you got to be ready to beat Bill Saps uh, come September, right. uh, first weekend of September. So just what does it kind of look like for you? And then we can kind of talk about the team in a second. But for you, what does an offseason kind of look like and your coaching staff as well? Yeah, well, as I mentioned, as soon as it was over, we, we met – Position coaches met with everybody in their position. I met with everybody on the team. It took me about three days, but I got through all of it. And I really enjoy that because you really get to learn a lot about where these kids are individually, and and they're in a really good spot. Yeah. You know, as, as successful as our season was, it was interesting to hear how many of them are unsatisfied and just hungry for more. Yeah. And wishing the season started next week. Uh, but so we spent some time evaluating who we are. Uh, we rank our team. Um, as a staff, we spent about three hours Tuesday before Thanksgiving going over every guy in our roster and ranking them basically one through. 80, which is mm -hmm. when the seniors gone. That's about where we are right now. Um, and we always talk about every organization, be it a church, be it a business, be it the military, <clears throat> be it a football team, it's basically composed of three parts, 10, 80, 10. You know, yeah. Your top 10% are your, your leaders, your captains, your, your guys that you know you can count on that kind of do everything right. And then there's 80% of your team that's your kind of your everyday soldier. They're your, your middle ground. There's nothing wrong with that. And then there's the bottom 10% uh, that are the negative guys, the locker room lawyers, whatever. And we're always trying to create a new bottom 10. Yeah. So we tell that bottom 10, you either get out or you move up. Yeah. You know, If you can always be creating a new bottom 10, your program will grow. So we yeah. spend a lot of time doing that, evaluating our program and seeing where our personnel is. And then starting this week, the state championship games are in Hattiesburg this Absolutely. Friday and yeah. Saturday. Our whole staff will be there. And then we'll hit the road in uh, the next two weeks before Christmas and do a whole lot of recruiting here for the next two months and then, yep. then get ready for spring ball. So it's, it's a never end. The cycle changes, yep. uh, but the work definitely doesn't end. Uh, the players aspect of it, uh, obviously it's going to look a little bit different, but you know, from a player perspective, you know, this winter, what does it look like for them? And then as they approach the spring season and, and spring practice and everything like that? Yeah. Well, coach Wood becomes their best friend in a hurry. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's one thing we did as we ranked and, and talked about our entire rosters, we kind of set goals and what we thought guys' bodies being able to do and, and change and position changes, things like that. So they'll spend a lot of time um, part of December, January, and February with Coach Wood uh, training and developing their bodies. Mm -hmm. He'll have three or four groups going a day. And um, it's always fun when you go recruiting to come back and you can already see guys' bodies changing a little bit, especially yeah. the young guys who haven't had a true off season with them. So uh, that's what they'll do. A lot of academic focus. You know, we're doing really, really good in the classroom. I think um, every semester we've been here but one, and that was during COVID, I believe, we broke our previous GPA record for a team. So we'll have a big academic emphasis, making sure guys are in good standing and yeah. not staying eligible because we don't want to talk about that. We want them to be on track to graduate. Yeah. You know, So being eligible is just the standard. They should be that. So yeah. let's make sure everybody's on track to graduate and then have a good plan for that. So uh, a lot of work to be done. Then when we get to the first week of March, we'll start spring practice and uh, see where we're at. And so with spring practice, what does that kind of look like? Because I think that's something like, you know, obviously I didn't grow up in a, in a on playing football so I mean that's something very different I think and, and we don't really know what that looks like what does that kind of look like is it you know is it pad pad practice is it is it walkthrough kind of stuff what does that look like well in division three uh, you're not allowed to wear pads in spring practice which I think is a mistake um, a coach is always gonna think that's a mistake but we, we do get 16 days we can go out you don't even get to wear a helmet which you know, I think a lot of coaches argue let's just put the helmet on because you turn around and catch a hitch and it hits you in the face you're getting a concussion you yeah. know um, but we do get 16 days we'll get a lot of work done uh, we'll do a lot of teaching. There'll be a lot of fundamental work, obviously, because yeah. you're not in pads. We will go 11 on 11 a little bit and line up and just see some formations and adjust, and we'll be yeah. full speed to the ball and then shut it down. Um, and there's a lot of energy in spring practice. We, we let the guys compete, and we'll do some things in spring practice that uh, our guys really enjoy other than football, just some, some character development things. Um, we've called them Manfield Fridays in the past. Those mm -hmm. will be coming around where we teach just basic life skills. You know, we teach guys how to change a flat tire. We yeah. teach guys how to start a grill. We'll teach yeah. guys how to build a resume. Yeah. You know, we'll teach guys how to tie a tie. Um, just life skills that they need outside of football because we always tell these guys when they come in, if all I do is teach you to block and tackle, yeah. I'm doing you a great disservice. So mm -hmm. when, we, when you come here, we want to develop you as a whole person, you know, athletically, academically, socially, and spiritually so that you can leave here better than you came. So 
Um, the offseason's busy. There's no rest for the weary, but the yep. focus is a little different as you're not getting ready for games. I'm going to push deeper into the offseason, and we're getting a little, a little far out. But I yeah. am curious because I think you've mentioned it. This past summer was where a lot of this work was yep. done. These players were fired up. They were taking it on themselves to, to improve, to set up yourselves for success this season. Over the summer, what does that kind of look like? Is that a lot of player-based stuff, or, or what does that look like? And you know, Obviously, the NCAA's got regulations. D3's got uh, specific rules. What does that look like getting ready in the summer for? Yeah. What's a quick turnaround? When you guys get back, it's you know, boom, boom, and you're, you're That's in right. game season. Yeah, summer happens fast, and summer is of extreme value for a college football program. And I think that's one of the reasons we were – made such a great jump last year is we had such a good summer. Mm -hmm. I think last year we had, um, you know, mid-60 guys here throughout the summer training with Coach Wood, and that's invaluable. You know, a lot of guys think, well, I can go home and train. Well, you can't. Yeah. You know, you'll go home and you'll work out and you'll do a little bit, but the accountability is not there. The team camaraderie is not there, which is of extreme value, and the gains just aren't the same for the guy that goes home. So the guys that stay, you can definitely see a difference. I would be shocked if we didn't have – 80, 90 percent of our returners here this summer training because they saw the benefits of it. I'll be honest with you, these guys just like being together. Yeah. They're one of the funnest groups I've ever been around in terms of team camaraderie and unity. They just they crave time together. Yeah. And if they're here in the summer, they're doing that. Now it's yeah. tricky because they have to get you know summer jobs and housing and things like yeah. that. So um, if anybody's watching this and they're hiring locally in the summer, we've got <laughs> a lot of guys will be looking for some summer jobs. So. Uh, but the summer's a great time. They have a good time in the summer, and, yeah. and they make some great gains. There's a lot of work being done uh, at the uh, Bellhaven Bowl Stadium, specifically with the press box. They're shipping containers, what they're referred to. No longer there. Uh, we're going to have a, a new uh, media support center. I don't know what the official wording is right I now. I call it a press box. Press yeah. box. That's what I would call it. Yeah. But uh, but anyways, we're getting a really, really nice setup put in there. And, and it's just going to allow us to kind of expand things on, on our end, especially the media end of things for football and soccer and everything else that happens in the bowl. But from a football perspective, I mean, what is that going to do? for y'all it's big you know it's something that we've recruited to for a couple years i think some of these kids were wondering like coach you recruited this for three years is it going to happen well yeah. yeah it's going to happen i'm not going to yeah. not going to break my promise to you so i'm um, really excited to see those shipping containers out of here yep. and some ground being broken and there's some pilings out there and some wires going everywhere so um, it's going to be neat to watch that happen throughout this semester and it's going to be just a great addition to an already beautiful stadium yep. you know and i think it's really going to bring our whole campus together and um, something we'll be really proud of. It'll help us be more functional as a athletic department as yeah. a whole. You know, it'll help you guys on game day Absolutely. with the things you yeah. need to do. Uh, it'll help us day to day at practice from a using the scoreboard and lights and a better place to film things Absolutely. like that. Um, and it just shows the commitment at Bellhaven to athletics as a whole. So we're really excited about that. So new press box, new conference, uh, yep. a lot of really good things happening at Bellhaven. So it's a good time. Obviously a great end of the season, and, and we're wrapping up here. Uh, you guys broke numerous records, offensive, defensive, special teams. Uh, you guys had 16. We talked about 16 all-conference recognitions, all-region and all-Americans still to come. Uh, should see some names pop up on that list. Yep. But, uh, Coach, we want to just congratulate you guys on, on what was a superb season. High expectations for next year, certainly. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to watch from our end, and uh, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, taking time to do the show every week. Absolutely. We get a lot of great feedback from uh, fans and families and, and people checking it out, and it's been a great way for us to promote our program. And um, Rick Negron and the, the film Absolutely. department over there does a great job, and we appreciate all their time and effort to make this work um, for free. So yep. <laughs> um, we really appreciate uh, everybody's time and effort with it. Certainly. Uh, well, this will be our, our final fall uh, slash winter. I guess we're into winter now episode. We may pop up in the spring one time or two to, to talk through things, but uh, thank you for our, everybody that's tuned along this uh, this season. We've had a ton of fun doing that. Um, and I, I know it's been enjoyable for players and parents and uh, just Bellhaven Blazers alumni and fans. And it's been a lot, a lot of fun this year. So coach, thanks again and uh, enjoy the off season. Thanks a lot.